And now you're thinking, good Lord, what is she going to say about that? <laughs> Last week when I preached, we were tearing our own eye out. This week, I am tackling divorce. And I'll have you know that God and I have wrestled with this all week. And please rest assured that we have found a way through it. Do not panic. I will not be admonishing any divorcees, particularly since I am one myself. So deep breath in, deep breath out. Got this. It's important to understand that in this portion of Mark, the Pharisees are repeatedly challenging Jesus. They keep questioning his interpretation of the law and trying to trip him up in ways that will allow for his prosecution and eventually his execution. This is the section in which we've already heard the prediction of Christ's passion twice, and we will soon see it predicted for a third time. This conversation is very much a gotcha conversation. We've come into the middle of the conversation when the pot has already been stirred, okay? In the time of Jesus' ministry, divorce is being used pretty loosely by men who want a fresh wife or several wives. And our scriptural canon is full of these stories. Last week, in fact, we read about Esther's rise when the king of Persia cast off his wife and held a six-months-long beauty pageant to replace her. Women are named as property of their husbands or often not named at all, as we see with Mrs. Job today. Jesus is responding both to his current context and the historical interpretation that allowed for divorce as it is written in the Hebrew canon, as it was given by Moses. We also need to acknowledge that this passage can be problematic for its naming of man and woman, husband and wife, without also naming wife and wife, man and man or non-binary, asexual, single people. And so let us broaden our discussion now to include these people whom in our modern context do have names and are deeply connected to us in community. All folks in our context can own property alone. They can have standing in society and all affirmed genders and expressions all people may create lasting and committed relationships when they feel called by God to do so. What divorce means for us in our context is that there is the vulnerability and great pain when divorce occurs. There is a ripping away that we experience when we have woven our lives together with another, when we have had children together or cats together when we have to divide assets and split up our home. This is particularly true in relationships that are unhealthy or codependent or abusive. Some of our relationships, God will call us to end because of this kind of dysfunction. And in these moments, those who are separating are in crisis. They and their family members are in need of support because they are suffering with the grief of the unraveling of the fabric of their chosen family. They're fragile, no matter how amicable the circumstances, and they need care. They are vulnerable. It is this vulnerability that Jesus is speaking to. In his time, women were left without societal standing, without money or food or shelter, right? Right? In our time, we have to choose friends and change churches and trade kids or cats, but most of us are not left completely without means or a way forward. We do have to face the idea of dating apps or watch a previous partner find too, new love. We have to worry over the effect that these things will have on our children and, our future, and their future relationships. We have seemingly in, endless financial concerns and spousal or child support to contend with, and we may face changes in our professional lives as all of this sort of shakes out. And all of it is hard. All of it. 
God knows this. Jesus sees this and is speaking about the importance of holding to our commitments, of being careful and present to the choices that we make, particularly as it pertains to our relationships. God gave us dominion over the animals, not so that we could eat them all, but to care for them and to steward them. God gave us to another, one another also, not to exploit, but to foster and to care for and steward, to companion and to love and to abide with. When we make the decision to marry or to have kids or to adopt a cat, we are asked to commit and care for that choice. It is why we hold it up as a sacrament in the church. Not so that you are bound to it by law, but so that you are bound with heart and spirit and by honor. It is so that you will regard that relationship with care and treat it with great respect. This passage is not an anathema to divorced people. This passage is for the direction and support of married people. People who were creating families together in that moment. Jesus was calling them to pay attention to those relationships and to hold them dear and to make them successful. He is asking them not to cast aside and put asunder a person who has value and deserves dignity and respect. He is calling us now to do the same. He is calling to people who have kids or parents or siblings they cannot or refuse to relate to. He is speaking to people who have spouses that they stubbornly do not agree with. He is warning us that relationships break. Even the best relationships break. And what I want to say to you is that how we show up for each other in these broken places matters. And it is something that we are called to do. As a community, we are called to do. It is asked of us in the baptismal covenant, and we review it every time we do a baptism. And yet these losses, these breaks in relationship, are things that we do not easily share with one another. They are things that we feel shame around and that we keep private. Why is that? Perhaps the reason for that lies in the way that we interpret this scripture as a pronouncement of shame and wrongdoing at the break rather than as an acknowledgement of the pain and vulnerability that come from such a break. Why else would it be paired with the blessing of children? The children in Jesus' time, like women cast off in divorce, have zero standing. They too are property. They have no standing and are, as such, vulnerable in society. Remember that even the dogs get the crumbs from the children's table. That is how low they rank, just above dogs. This is a call to protect divorced people and children. Jesus is asking us to commit to one another fully in order to prevent this kind of vulnerability in our community. Now, we cannot prevent divorce. We are far from that reality as a society, right? That ship has sailed. But we can protect the vulnerable by creating community and supporting one another. We know this. We already do this. We are connected spiritually by our faith in Christ. We are committed financially in the community engagement and advocacy work that we do. We are connected physically as we show up here together to worship, to volunteer, to have fellowship, and to break bread. So we will do what Jesus asked us to do in caring for our relationships and for each other's relationships. We will be good stewards of our families, of our people, and of our children. And we will honor the families and relationships that are chosen because we can see the love that God is creating through them. We believe that families can foster and grow 
good Christian people. To that end, we will support all families and advocate for the education of our children. For this reason, we have a day school and we work to strengthen the Christian formation of our children on Sundays and on Wednesdays. Let us continue to do that work. Let us also find ways to support one another in between those meetings because the world right now is exhausting, isn't it? To this end, I am working with God to create some new opportunities for supporting entire families so that we can learn together how to support one another better. And I'm going to need your help with that. As we grow and adapt to ever-changing landscapes of emotion and weather and violence and elections, it is important that we keep an eye on our hearts, that we guard them against the breaks that seem inevitable, and protect one another when we become vulnerable. Life is short, friends. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.